You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyon Rowe and Zoe Clegg. No, it's a naked sock puppet. Oh, hello. You're watching Chewing the Cud, your weekly light-hearted look through a slightly glittery kaleidoscope. I'm Mike Benyon Rowe, and with me today we welcome a new friend. Yes, a special friend, and that's Zoe Clegg. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? I'm OK. I'm, I'm... You made a comment before the show, so like we started recording, which was about my outfit. And what was that, Zoe? It's it's Postman Pat chic. Uh-huh. It's, <laughs> it's giving Royal Mail. Yeah. <laughs> no one has to see my black and white pussy. But what have you got for us this week? Uh, I'm bringing you a story about an inspirational trans storyline before we play a game. And that's before we get all up close and personal with Zoe in Spotlight. But on screen now you can see our contact details. It's at the Cud TV on your social media channels. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always give us a good binge on YouTube. Just look for Chewing the Cud. You can see the names of the people who've reached out and touched our souls going along the bottom of the screen. And now it's time to get up to date on the things you may have missed from the news in the buzz. <laughs> Did you ever go to university? I did. What did you study? Oh, the delightful world of culinary arts. <laughs> food? Yeah, food. Just ate a lot. F uh, yeah, ate a lot. Made a point of drinking a lot to wash it down, so, obviously, I healthily. Think, exactly. You've got to make sure you lubricated. Of course. As a student. Um, well, did you have to go into the library a lot? Oh, all the time. Okay. <laughs> because um, Lipscomb University in Nashville, okay. which I love the name as a university. Lipscomb. Lipscomb. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a posh name for a pepper. Um, <laughs> they have had to basically stop people taking their books out as they oh, were the killing line. students. The books were the killing books students? The books were killing students. Right. Tell me more. Proof that education <laughs> is bad for you. Um, <laughs> Don't read books, kids. Yeah, they're, they're, they're poisonous. Um, so it's books that are over 100 years old, right, I that see. had chemicals in the in the brightly coloured sort of like um, pages and stuff. Love hallucinogenic like, ink moment. Well, well like arsenic <laughs> that was mm -hmm. in the pages to make nice bright green colours. Yikes. Yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. So the way that they've dealt with this um, is they contacted the CTC which mm -hmm. is the American like, health people. Disease control. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, the people in America went, ooh, COVID's quite bad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? What do we do? Let's ask the, let's ask the president. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> they said, put them in Ziploc bags, it'll be fine. <laughs> the solution to deadly chemicals Ziploc found bag. in university books, which people are going to want to get out and read, uh -huh. understandably, is Ziploc bags. Yep. Like, are we talking special no. books? No. We're talking Ziploc bag because no, they're airtight. No, can't Ziploc bag. <laughs> get down to Asda, get yourself a couple hundred. You'd be right. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, that's how they got around it. So now these books are in Ziploc bags. They can't be withdrawn and by students. And they're completely unreadable. Yeah, yeah. Unreadable. Unreadable. While they look for solutions to sure. uh, fix the dyes and things, they said, just put them in Ziploc, they'll be fine. <laughs> Who knew? Like, we could have completely subverted COVID. By, by putting, just putting ourselves in Ziploc bags this entire time. There's a problem with that, which is a lack of air in a Ziploc bag. No, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like wait, why did all these people die from COVID? No, Ziploc bags. Yeah, it wasn't COVID. <laughs> it was the Ziploc, <laughs> it was Ziploc bag, Ziploc obviously. Bag. That's how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's move away from something quite as scary as dangerous killer books mm -hmm. um, to something slightly weird. We love something slightly weird. I'm going to ask a very personal question first. Do you okay. use deodorant? Yes, okay. daily. Okay. Do you believe that's a personal <laughs> item? I would say so. Yeah. I would say I would, so. It's not something I would share with no. anyone and everyone. No. Or anyone full stop. Anyone, no. Um, well, this is for um, a lady in America, again, Americans, <laughs> um, who goes by the, the TikTok name of Mrs. Mom. Mrs. Mom. Mrs. Mom. For, the, you know, formerly single mom. Imagine that was quite a different life. I guess, I, having read some of her posts, I don't think she would have had premarital. No. <laughs> Took getting a ring on it. One of the square states in the middle kind of people. Ah, one uh, of those. One of those. Good. Um, who basically w went on the internet to ask a question to solve a marital dispute she was having, mm -hmm. which was, do you share deodorant? Absolutely not. What a heinous crime. She didn't think so. She thought it was the most sensible thing in the world to do, which was have a family deodorant. Familial deodorant, mm -hmm. not just So her, her husband 
her her son and her daughter. Son and daughter are both teenagers. Uh, <laughs> um, all were sharing the same deodorant. I hope it was it an aerosol at least. No, it was no, a roll-on. Roll on. Oh, well, God. it wasn't even a roll-on. It was one of those sticky, gooey ones. So, mm. yeah. So um, her husband, who is quite a hirsute gentleman... Of um, course he is. ...was saying, why, why do we have to share deodorant? <laughs> Do you know I feel what? sorry for reasonable everybody else. Question. <laughs> reasonable question. Definitely reasonable question. And she said, because they're expensive. She buys the very expensive, like, it's $10 a, a, a go sort of thing. Sure. Right? And she said that if we all share one, it means I don't have to buy as much deodorant. But it will deplete four times quicker. Didn't care about that. <laughs> it was the fact she refused to spend more than $10 a month on deodorant, so you all have to share. No! Yeah. No. I went on TikTok to plead her case and say to the world, that's perfectly reasonable, isn't it? Oh, TikTok. What a, what a wonderful, strange, <laughs> strange place. <laughs> when I first saw it, do you remember the woman that made a cup of tea by microwaving it? Oh, yeah, that really took off as a, here's the American way of making tea. And, and it just upset to, everybody. Everybody knew how to make a cup of tea. I first thought it was going to be the same person. Yeah. <laughs> But no. You just want to be hated. <laughs> you are doing this on purpose. Exactly. There is no way this is actually how you live your life. This is a fetish and you're getting <laughs> off on it. And no, it's You a want person. the attention for whatever reason. <laughs> like, and I'm just, I can't give you that. No. <laughs> no. But instead of giving attention, we featured it on the show. Um, but if you wanted some attention on the show, just because, why not? Why not share it with us? We are at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. You are happily partnered. I am indeed. Yes, with a wonderful person called Adam. Yes, indeed. I'm going to get a little bit pers more personal now. More personal? More personal than sharing a stick of anti stench. Um, mm. <laughs> which is sexy time. Okay, there okay. has been a poll about when people have the most sexy time. Okay, I see. Okay. When would you think the great unwashed pub public most have their coital interactions? It's got, it's got to be a... Sa Friday or a Saturday night. Oh, you have to pick one. You can't say it either. Ooh. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Friday night. Okay, Friday night. We're getting Christmas from the gallery. Yeah. <laughs> Tells you more about more about their relationship than it does about anything yeah. else. Yeah, annually. <laughs> <laughs> they don't celebrate Christmas. That's why. Uh, <laughs> so a recent poll has been given to the people. Mm. Pun intended. Um, of that during the week. The later you get in the week, the more rampant people get. Sure, okay. Right, so Monday, Excitement no sexy the weekend. Time. Oh, God, yeah, no. Nothing right. on a Monday. Nothing on a Monday. Maybe a bit on a Tuesday and job on a Wednesday. Saturday is the day. Ah, right? so close. 30, literally, 34 people, 34% <laughs> of people say they prefer their sexy time on a Saturday. Yeah, I can get behind that. Yeah. Now, out of those 34 people, a massive 80% of those people mm. say just before 10 past 10, is the peak time. Just, that's so specific. They, they drilled down further into the statistic and said, <laughs> um, it's nine minutes past ten is the exact time. So most people feel amorous at nine minutes past ten on a Saturday evening. Well, yeah, that's usually by the point that the red wine's been sunk and <laughs> You've had the, the telly's out. got boring. So, yeah, yeah. Like, what should you watch on Netflix? Well... And then you realise... Nothing after you, ten past ten. Yeah, realise you live alone and no one will shag you. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a fantastic statistic. That is a great... Uh, that is what data researchers should be out there for. Exactly. They shouldn't be doing anything of any more value than that. That is the most valuable bit. Like one in four households could save £50 pounds on the electric bill by bore off. Tell us when people are f***ing. When are people shagging? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, some people are saying it's the new hottest six hottest number so it's hotter than 69 because it's 1009 i think that's pushing it i thought that was pushing I think it that's as well pushing it. that's stop trying to make 1009 happen exactly it's not going to happen now <laughs> out of all those people right it was mainly heterosexual couples okay okay now i know from my own personal exhaustive research that most gay men have sex on a thursday evening sure or friday morning <laughs> is that it no, definitely not on a Saturday at ten past ten at night. No, because that's when all the gays are out clubbing. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. just just leaving the house at that point. <laughs> Getting a third bottle of wine and going, "Come on, guys!" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Thursday evening. Thursday evening. Yeah. Has there been any research done into why that is? I have done a lot of research, and it's just because that's when I have grinder open. To be fair, 
So, is the now on telly on a Thursday? Is the now worth watching? Well, no, because all of the streaming services tend to do on Friday, don't they? They release yeah, on a Friday. Friday release for the weekend. So, exactly. yeah, Thursday is the boring night where exactly. you've got to find entertainment elsewhere. Exactly. And then Friday night, Lord of the Rings comes out. So you can't possibly be doing anything else. No, because that's a like, festival on its own. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all from the buzz this week. Thanks, Mike. And now I know when I should be scheduling sex in with my partner. Looking at your watch quite excitedly there. You're welcome, Zoe. Stay right there as coming after this short break, Zoe brings us up to date with the world of celebrity in showbiz. <laughs> welcome back, and you're watching Chewing the Cud. This is the part of the show where we look into the sparkly side of the world of celebrity and media in the showbiz with Zoe. Do you remember, do you remember, probably remember Coronation Street, don't you? I thought you were about to ask the 21st night of September, I do. <laughs> Um, Always an option. <laughs> I do remember Coronation Street, yes. That's, that show from long ago that's clearly not still on the TV anymore. No, no, it's not. Is it still on the TV? Yeah, People fairly. People still sure. watching it? Well, it's still on the TV, okay. you know. I'm sure it's got, it's not got the viewership that could has, obviously. Literally got tens of viewers. <laughs> no more than that. They couldn't possibly. No, yeah, no, no. Do you know who probably is still watching it, though? I was going to say the Queen, but she's dead. <laughs> yeah, um, that's why the viewership's looking to the <laughs> yeah, tens. Uh, and Queen Mum. Ooh, a really old reference. <laughs> She's been dead years. Um, enlighten me. Elliot Page, oh, I'm sure, okay. still watches it because it was a show that he watched with his parents when he was younger. Oh, right. So it was one of his mum's favourite shows. And uh, when watching it as a youngster, they said that that was their first interaction with, with the trans community in public media. Oh, with the story with the about Hayley Cropper. Cropper. Oh. Oh, that's good. Because Hayley Cropper famously was the first trans representation on British TV in a soap opera. Yeah, I feel like it absolutely must have been. Was, I, yeah. I remember the outcry when it happened. I remember I remember watching the episode and being mm -hmm. like, oh my God, this is really cool actually because the only time I'd ever seen anything on the TV that was anything even remotely queer was Lily Savage doing Blankety Blank. And, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It was such... Yeah niche stuff so to see this just being played out in normal life as normal as curry is because that has got to be the most active mental street <laughs> in manchester you mean you manchester. haven't seen a tram crash through somebody's living room no do you know what not recently not recently <laughs> not uh. recently no certainly like christmas is never that exciting <laughs> eastenders it is East End, eastenders something is blowing up something is catching someone, fire someone dies or comes back yeah, somebody died 10 years ago and miraculously wanders back onto the street like nobody's <laughs> business. And you're like, no, don't think that's how that works. I know that's a reference to um, Den getting shot, Den Watts. Yeah, got shot with a bunch of daffodils. Like, I've been shot with the worst flowers. I'm, reven I'm avenging my death. Yeah, absolutely not. We're absolutely not having that not be the way it. I go no. out. No. <laughs> Wait, so Elliot Page watched, <laughs> watching it with his mum. That's cool. I do. I love the fact that it's something that was very much on in my household when I was a kid. And to think where Elliot Page has gone on to be, I'm like, ah, we were watching the same shows as kids. <laughs> That's a weirdly nice, comforting thing. It's like, why, why have they got the fame and the fortune? I watched Corrie. Yeah. I watched Hollyoaks. I should be born. Yeah. <laughs> I was punished. <laughs> yeah. I had to sit through Hollyoaks. <laughs> I was in Hollyoaks once. Yeah. yeah, I got a clip around the air from my mother because they used to film in Chester mm. and then I was caught eating a, a Sayers sausage roll, which I think before Greg's, um, on the rose and they filmed and... <laughs> <laughs> in the background, you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> I like, saw you on Ollie Oaks. <laughs> you should Go have been in school. school. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So we've got a story here about Omar Apollo. Ooh. Who is starring uh, in a new and upcoming film called Queer. Ooh. And during, apparently throughout this film, he has several steamy sex scenes with Daniel Craig. Sorry, I need to go. <laughs> or we need to watch it. Yeah, it needs to be out <laughs> an hour ago for us to have watched it. My goodness. Now, Are I, they both naked? I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Omar Apollo is. Hey. I'm that person there. That's Omar Apollo. I had no idea who this person was before I looked into this story. Having now looked into this story, I will be booking the day off work. 
the day. Go, the whole day. <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> but not quite ten past ten. Yeah. It's two hour. It's a two hour film. So yeah. if we start watching it. So if I book it in, for, yeah. If I go see the last viewing. I can have a right nice Saturday evening. <laughs> Oh, don't have adult. Oh, cool, no. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, quit. Do, you, do we know what the story is about? I believe that Daniel Craig is playing uh, a gay man mm -hmm. who is uh, attempting to attract the affections of somebody who believes himself to be straight and throughout this movie discovers that they are very much not straight. Uh, didn't get any further into the plot than that because I just was really excited about... You got distracted by pictures, didn't you? Fully got distracted <laughs> by the pictures in the article, I'm not going to lie. I, I also <laughs> read up on this story and I got to this, the, the queer, a movie with Daniel Craig and Omar and then saw a picture and that's all I can remember. So I, be I believe that Omar is going to be one of Craig's former lovers. Okay. Uh, so it will be lots of flashback sex scenes. Mm. Just flashing of the back. It's always fun. <laughs> it's usually the bit you're looking at, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do a lot of looking. <laughs> What's your favourite film then? Obviously, after after queer. After queer. After queer. Once I've seen not it. yet watched. Uh, sucker for Moulin Rouge. I can put that on at any time. Happy, sad, or otherwise. Okay, it's a bit of a sad, sad film. Bit of a sad film, but prostitute dying before she, when she finds true love. Sure. But the songs are real fun. Oh, the songs are fun. <laughs> the songs are real fun and uplifting. <laughs> well. Most of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about you, Mike? What's your favourite movie? So, I, oh, I have a slight problem because my favourite movie I ever watched was Cruel Intentions. Okay. Okay. With Sarah Michelle Gellar, mm -hmm. Samuel Blair and Ryan Philippe's bum. And Ryan Philippe's bum. Nothing else. Nothing else perceived during that film. You not watch that film? Nope. <laughs> there's, 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 uh, let me get me film. Ryan Phillips, bum. I see the appeal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and to, you know, <laughs> knowing that that film came out a year or two ago, um, young teenage Mike, very enamoured by that. Um, but I can see why. Yeah, Quill Attention is based off a, a book mm -hmm. um, about the same thing, but it's set in uh, 17th century France. So it's very mm. high, bro, really. Bit yeah, bit period. Bit period. But they said a friend Philippe's bum in it. <laughs> what, else, what else could it possibly Not need? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, final story I've got for us mm -hmm. is Jojo Siwa. Oh, OK. Quite controversial. So at the point of looking this up, uh, mm. the story changed completely. So Ooh. there were rumours... Uh, spouted by Jojo Siwa herself, I believe. Okay, so not a rumour then, just publicist. Well, <laughs> <coughs> Jojo Siwa was spouting uh -huh. that she... Ooh, spouting? Well, spouting. that tells me exactly what you think of her. <laughs> uh, that she was potentially going to be uh, the next Eurovision entrant for Poland. Okay, that's a weird one. But... Yeah. So... Apparently, Jojo Siwa has Polish heritage. Okay. Uh, and that therefore makes her potentially, theoretically, eligible to be uh, Poland's entry into Eurovision. They, you can have anybody. Be, so, um, Is this me not understanding Eurovision? No, I, th I think it's <laughs> probably... Is this me a, thinking it's like the Olympics where you've got to at least be from her there? not understanding it and saying, <laughs> this is why I can do it. Um, so we have a friend of the show, uh, Ven Smith, mm. who... Um, got through to the finals for Sam Reno and is Scottish. Oh, okay. So, yeah, there's no, no links. It's not the Olympics. Jojo no. Siwa's probably got that very wrong. Yeah, because the way, the way it sounded like she was describing it in the TikTok that she made, I believe it was a TikTok, was that she has Polish heritage and therefore she I'm was in to. talks with Poland. Okay. Poland, the country of. Just, yeah, uh, all of them. All of Poland. All big once. group chat. <laughs> <laughs> that WhatsApp chat is hellish i imagine uh to say <laughs> that she was going to be um their entrant for eurovision okay i checked up on this again last night mm -hmm. and it had been updated to say that poland again the country of in its entirety had come out to say these talks are not happening <laughs> this is completely made up who is jojo siwa what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> what I look, who is jojo siwa yeah. i hope that happened uh, yeah i yeah that's me embellishing because that, that's brilliant <laughs> I just want the entire country of Poland to be turning around and going, who is Jojo Siwa? 
<laughs> they're going, remember that one from the dance mom thing? Like, yeah. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah. Anything? No. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, um, she's also wearing a very gay outfit because she's, of course, family. Of course, she is one of us. Uh-huh. Sadly. Mm. We didn't get a receipt. Um, <laughs> what's your... she's one of us, don't we? we got to claim her. Exactly. Um, question about Eurovision moments from you. Mm. Favourite one? I think it has to have been from the last one, purely because it was incredibly unhinged and I had no idea that it was coming at all. Windows 95, man. Mm -hmm. They absolutely... Because absolutely not the thing I expected, you know, to see a man prancing about the stage with no trousers on, just barely covering his member. Absolutely had me in fits. I think I missed every performance after that <laughs> because I just could not stop giggling at the idea of this man running along and somebody with a camera just placed right. Oh, what a beautiful... Man. Busting out of an egg at the beginning. Too funny not to. Too funny. What was yours? Um, I think probably my favourite Eurovision moment was again from last year, and that's mm. when they were talking to some of the crowd and their grinder went off. <laughs> so they're going, they're going, and who are you with? I'm here with my partner. And they were like, no, I don't know what that noise is. Exactly. Mm. Didn't watch any of the performances after that. So they're going, let's find this person, change my location on grinder. Let's do it. Let's find Yes, it. of course I'm in Malmo. <laughs> Where are you? Trying to get in his Malmo. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> And that's all from the showbiz this week. Thanks for that, Zoe. Always nice to have a, a recollection of a, a gentleman going off in public. Um, <laughs> but stick around, because coming up next, we have a game to play in our mm -hmm. Game of the Week. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud with me, Mike Benny Rowe, and then Zoe Clegg. Now, this is the part of the show where we're going to play a little game, and a game called Riddled. And this one is for our newest member to be the master of being riddled. So, off you pop. Okay. Game of the Week. In a game of riddles, we twist and we turn. With questions so tricky, your brain will burn. But with laughter and fun, you solve the clues. In this riddle game, it's me versus you. Mike, you ready for your first one? My brain will burn like my pee, or my brain will just burn. Uh, I mean, if your pee's burning, I'm fairly sure there's a there's a cream for that. There's an there's an oh, ointment I, for I, that. I am, I am on the antibiotics. It's fine. <laughs> um, yes, I am ready. Amazing. I'm not a blanket, yet I cover the ground. A crystal from heaven that doesn't make a sound. What am I? On the ground, blanket. Oh. Mike. Cocaine. I mean, how much do you earn if you can afford to blanket the ground with that? Oh, no, I was, th I was thinking more like Michael Jackson when he had held the baby blanket out of the bedroom window. <laughs> he was quite clearly on something. Yeah, that would... Uh, it's not the answer I'm looking for. OK. Well, what's the answer, then? Uh, it's a snowflake. I'm sorry, I'd need a, a name to... Gallery. Nickname for, for cocaine, snow. Yep, it's a, that's a yes. That's the one. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's this? Me grasping at straws. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's have the next one then. Next I'm sure, one. I can do better. I'm sweet and cold with a stick to hold. A treat on a hot day worth more than gold. What am I, Mike? Quite clearly about penises. Sh I mean, sh sure. How often is yours? Uh, Sweet and cold. Well, <laughs> we don't kink shame here. You've been dangling it out of windows again. No, in the fridge. <laughs> you find it in a petty flu, it's your own problem, you know. <laughs> Mike. Double buzzed. Not Double that. bubble. I've done that before. <laughs> um, an ice lolly. Correct. Yay! Ooh. I'm this ready for the next one when you are. This is a great one. What has a head but no brain? Penises. That, I mean, I will accept that. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. But what, what was it actually? Uh, it was a lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
its counterpart, depending on what kind of relationship you're in. Oh, I wrote it. <laughs> Mike. Former Prime Minister Liz Truss. <laughs> Lasts longer. Yeah. We know this to be true. We know also this has a head and no brain. Yes. <laughs> and doesn't oh. last as long as a leftist either. Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, but she didn't kill the Queen, just saying. Yeah, she did. Cow. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Why do cats make good warriors? Why do cats make good warriors? Mmm. I think they did. <laughs> they do, they do according to this riddle. Okay, why do cats make good warriors? I mean, I know pussy's not your strong suit, but... Not really. Um... <laughs> Do you need a hint? Yeah, I do need a hint. I'm really struggling with that one. <laughs> the number nine. <laughs> Mike. Because if you send out 60 of them, there's a very lot of... Uh, very pussy. No, I don't know. <laughs> because they've got nine lives. That doesn't mean they're good warriors. That just means that they're easier <laughs> to keep going after they've been... Means that they've got longevity, I guess. Yeah. They can be shit at it. They can be shit at it, but they can just keep going. It's like, well, they've done that, or he's just shot himself in the face. Well, that's one of his lives gone. <laughs> What's he done now? Oh, he's lit some poison. Another one gone. That's... <laughs> We're down to seven here. Exactly, and that's just assuming they started with nine. <laughs> I mean, kicked it or put in a bin. Um, let's move on to... Who writes these things? I, I, I know who writes them, and I'm always perturbed <laughs> by them. <laughs> I have a neck, but no head. I... Liz Truss. <laughs> So. I'm still willing to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> I have two arms, but no hands. What am I? It's Liz Truss, but with two arms and no hands. It's Paralympian, isn't it? <laughs> Very apt. They have just been on, aren't they? <laughs> right. A neck, no head. Yep. Yeah. Two arms, but no hands. Mike. Teapot. I'm a multi-armed teapot. You might be onto something there. No, because, you know, if you're a bit shaky with one, you always put your finger under the spout and it's hot under there. It is hot but under there. If you have two and you can pour forwards. <laughs> Two-handled teapot. It's not the answer I'm looking for, I'm afraid. OK. <laughs> it's a shirt. Huh? Neck but no head. Two arms, but no hands. Oh. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh. Like a very fetching red polo. I had an issue on the way to work. Right. <laughs> now, the people who watch the show know I have a job called George, who is a, a sweetheart and also a dickhead. <laughs> right? And on the way to the show today, he went, you know what? I like that shirt that you're going to wear today, Dad. Let's run it through the mud outside. Give it a run through the garden first. Ran, that improves everything, right? through the right? garden, brought it in, tail wagging. Look, look what I've done for you. So I had to stop in at a clothing shop on the way here, and this was the only thing they had in my size. It wasn't green. Very, it's very, very royal mail. Very red. <laughs> it's very it was, red. It was the post office I stopped into. Yeah, I figured. Oh, there's, there's a postie walking around going, why am I having to do this with my nips out? <laughs> These must. Let's move on before I start shaming myself. <laughs> before you reveal another kink. Oh, there's, there's no shame in those. Never any shame. No. Never any shame. Questions. What word contains 26 letters but only has three syllables? <laughs> Mike. I've got you with this one because you've been a smart ass. It's alphabet. It is the alphabet. That's not even a riddle. That's just a question. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, Alphabet doesn't, the alphabet does. It must be the alphabet, correct. Well, that's got four syllables then. The alphabet, four. But this question sheet's wrong. <laughs> Again, we need to shoot the producer. <laughs> there's all, that's the only logical conclusion for it. <laughs> we have to go from, from smile disappointment to murder in one easy step. That's, that's the way the world works. <laughs> what comes down but never goes up? <laughs> and if it does, consult your doctor. <laughs> the price of electric. 
That, that's always going up. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I... Uh, the rain. That's but the rain does go up. It doesn't go up as rain. It does go up, but not as rain though. It's the circle of life. <laughs> it moves <laughs> us all. The circle of water. <laughs> <laughs> GCSE's coming in real handy there. It, it, it was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to draw you a little picture and everything. <laughs> Did a little picture with the little arrows. Yeah. <laughs> what, on, let's get one more. What five-letter word typed in all capital letters can be read the same upside down? <laughs> Mike. <laughs> that is a fairly universal word. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> also universal. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> 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 These are all four-letter words. I'm fairly sure I said, oh, what, five-letter word? Five-letter word? <laughs> Mike. <laughs> <laughs> five-letter word, typed in all capital letters, can be read the same upside down as right way up. Kayak. That's a palindrome. That's, yeah, that's forwards and backwards, isn't it? Yeah. We're looking for upside down. No, no idea. Uh, the answer is swims. Oh. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> anyway, have we got any more? <laughs> we'll do you one more then. The more you take, the more you leave behind. What am I? <laughs> Mike. Dignity. Yeah. <laughs> Acceptable. The Acceptable. The more, more people take my dignity, the less I have behind. Um, <laughs> The more I take, the less I have behind. <laughs> the more you take, the uh -huh. more you leave behind. Poo. <laughs> why, why are you taking people's poo? <laughs> I don't know what's the answer. Footsteps. Uh, the more footsteps you take, the more tapes you leave behind. The more every the move more you make, every word you break, every bond you break even. I'll be watching you. And that's why I have a police injunction. But stay around. <laughs> We're coming up next after this short break. We're going to ask Zoe some lovely little questions in Spotlight. <laughs> Welcome back. You're still watching Mike and Zoe and chewing the cud. And now I'm going to ask all manner of things of a personal in situation oh, in Spotlight with Zoe. <laughs> But it needs tiddly batteries, uh, and like tiddly... lots of them. Oh, that's poo. Expensive. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're here to ask Zoe some questions from the wonderful epic jar of joy. It is Ooh. rather spangly. It, it's, very, it's very special. <laughs> um, and it's got some sort of stain on it at the top. Anyway, mm, um, delicious. <laughs> but before we do, I just thought I'd ask, get to know you a little bit better about you. OK. OK. Uh, some general questions, just to understand what makes you tick. Because, of course, you've been on the show before. I have. Because you came to talk about a D&D thing. A D&D thing. D &D D &D thing. thing. <laughs> um, that's why I have to say it, because it, it repulses me. Um, <laughs> um, repulse. <laughs> I, I repulse everybody. Look what I'm fucking wearing. It's <laughs> the reason why I'm single. This is it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. You've been on the show before as a guest. I have. Right, talking about the Grim North, which is a D&D &D thing. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, tell us something else about you, though. I've recently gotten into crochet, which is really riveting and exciting. I have an interesting fact about crochet. You do? In France, it's called hooking. It's called hooking. So yeah. what, so someone in France who crochets may be known as a hooker. Exactly, yeah. How yeah. exciting. Yeah. I only knew that because when I went to France, I was young and the, the movie Hook came out. Sure, yeah. And it was Captain Crochet. I'm like... It was not. What? It Hook was, was called not Captain called Crochet. Captain Crochet in <laughs> yes. France. What? Ca Captain Hook in France is called Captain Crochet. You know? Yeah. Stand back. I'll make you a blanket. It's like, like, <laughs> like you're ready for a doily. <laughs> You'd be amazed at the speed at which I can bang out coasters. <laughs> yeah. So. Crochet means hooking. So crochet so, yeah. means hooking. So yeah, you're a hooker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So D and D crochet. I'm secret. Yeah, I think I am secretly a little, an old lady. 
like I have I like a secret. I like well yeah, it's, it's much less secret now. I uh, I like my I like my board games. I like my crochet. I have a cat at home and would gladly have another six. <laughs> What's the cat called? Uh, she's called Giselle. Okay. Which was not the name I gave her. Uh, that was the name that the shelter had given her. Uh -huh. uh, when we adopted her, she wandered in, screaming her head off, requiring medical attention. <laughs> Just wandered in off the street and was like, help me! So, you've got a drug addict cat. A little Just bit. Just like, what was it going, I need drugs! I need Give drugs, drugs and help! I know how that feels. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she wandered in and they were like, well, we've decided you're called Giselle. That's great. Okay. And about a fortnight later, I went and adopted her. And now, roughly annually, it's probably coming up for that time of year, actually, uh, she gives us some kind of health scare. Okay. Uh, which usually requires taking her to the vet where they go, she's being dramatic, have some painkillers for her. So she is, she's a little drug addict. <laughs> you fully predicted my story. <laughs> okay, again, you know, because Mister's got a cat that he's stolen from his neighbours. Yeah, not his cat, stolen no. cat. Yeah, not stolen cat, okay, that's fine then. Um, <laughs> cool, let's get into some, some questions from the Jar of Joy then. What's the Jar of Joy got for us? Okay, so these these tend to be either or, either or questions. Okay. Um, would you rather have one nipple or two belly buttons? See, insightful, deep <laughs> questions. <laughs> Journalism. Exactly. <laughs> um, I, I, oh, two belly buttons. That's double the fluff. Double. <laughs> I don't get a lot of fluff in my existing one, so but a second one may but lead. Where, to... However much you get, you get double. I'm gonna get double. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. Okay, I've always thought that one nipple would be nice, but it'd be a lot lopsided. You walk in circles. Well, that'd be the thing. It, it, would it be one nipple bang in the middle, or is it just like one on one boob? It'd be one on one boob. That would be odd. You would be odd on lopsided, whereas two, I think, would balance you one out one with way. the existing amount of nipples. You could then have a line well, of belly buttons. But it doesn't say the belly button could be somewhere different. <laughs> it could be one on the front, one on the back. Exactly, or one on the side. One on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, next question. <laughs> What else have we got? Would you rather have a flying carpet mm. or a car that can drive underwater? Oh, flying carpet. All cars can drive underwater. <laughs> Once. <laughs> Maybe. Not very far, but they can. <laughs> no, the, the thought of what is in the ocean is absolutely terrifying to me. 85% of the ocean is undiscovered. Uh -huh. We don't know what's in it. Water. I ain't taking my car down there. I've got no desire to be under the water <laughs> whatsoever, especially not in a car. We all know what happened in Ocean Gate. It's bound to happen. What happened in Ocean Gate? Oh, it was the billionaires who got in a tiny little uh, capsule submarine. Oh, the one... Uh, and that was controlled with a really... The Titanic. Yeah, they went to see the Titanic. Con and then controlled it's by the, uh, the terrible wireless controller, which where they got so far away and... It disconnected. And they all sank and it was a tragedy because people died. That is sad, no matter what. But there's now more people planning on doing that. I'm sure there are more expect expeditions just, planned. I just now have this image of... I've mentally drawn a graph. I'm right, drawn a graph. <laughs> of people that died in the Titanic. 1912, high. Quite a spike. Not much, not much, not much. A blip. Yeah, and then 20... <laughs> 20 was it last year? Was it this year? 2022, I think. 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've also found out that you're on my wavelength. That's not good for you. Um, would you rather have everything you do live streamed for the world to see, nope. right? <laughs> or whatever you were thinking about appear in a bubble above your head? Oh, I think the second one's much more entertaining. I'd be arrested. <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't be for long. Yeah, I'd probably end up in a nice white jacket with really, really long sleeves that go around the back. Oh, no, I wouldn't end up with one of those. It would just be people going, I can't. It's indecent. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like, didn't know Chris Hemworth could move that way. Well, <laughs> it can be uh, nice, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. I'm going to have to ask you about celebrity crush, crushes while you get your, oh, gosh. your hand out. So go on. Who, who's the celebrity? So I've kind of consistently had the piss taken out of me for this. Okay. Uh, but my celebrity crush is Darren Brown, who is a gay man. <laughs> Darren Brown. Darren Brown. Am I Consistently thinking, am I the thinking of the right person when you're saying Darren Brown? Am I thinking that the... Ooh. The magician-y, psychic -y, yeah, that one. Darren Brown. Yeah. I know that's a weird one. <laughs> it's not weird. Look, if it's what what you go, ooh, yes, <laughs> too, that's perfectly fine. Not my cup of tea, but that's, 
that's that's it. Should you ask that question before you? Am I going to ask this question before I say something else more silly than that? Would I rather breathe ice or breathe fire? I feel like fire is going to be way more inconvenient. Like, imagine you've got the flu or a cough or a cold or something like that. You'd be warm. You would be boiling all the time. And, you know, you sneeze in the middle of a supermarket. I imagine that's probably akin to how a breath weapon works. You sneeze in the middle of the supermarket, you're going to put Asda under. <laughs> Do I get to choose who's in front of me? Is yeah. the question I have at that point? <laughs> Right. Generally in life, yeah, you can generally pick who's in front of you in life. <laughs> because there's one woman at Asda that she's always there and she's always in my way. Is she, st- is she staff or is it just you go at the no, same no, no. time as this no, woman no, every I, week? No matter when I go, she's always she's there. Always there. <laughs> right? We need to start running experiments on this. You need and to start going at obscene times of the day and I night. have been to Asda at three in the morning. <laughs> And she's there. Because that's when I go, before Christmas, Yeah, I go at three in the morning because everyone else is in bed. She's there. She's there. She's always <laughs> there. Is she a real person? Is she yes, just some sort of Yes, she specter? gets in my way. <laughs> she's one of these people that leaves a trolley in the middle at an angle oh, and, and, then goes to the, and then goes to the next. I'm like, take it with you. It's on That's the point of the trolley. Take it with you. Take it with you. <laughs> Don't be a terrible person. Yeah. Crazy lady exactly. at Asda. Or die. One of the Yeah. <laughs> I ha- Two options. I, ha- I have a mortal enemy, and it's a random woman I don't know the name of at Asda. It's I don't a care. random woman at Asda. Yeah. Anyway. I feel like fire for you, whereas I'm thinking ice. I can chill drinks real easy, and that would be a fun party trick. It would, but only if you like to chill drinks. So it's only useful for, like, the hot months. Mm. It's like three weeks in June. Yeah. People go, oh, come look, chill a drink. Mm. But do you want to be really breathing fire in the winter months, potentially inside your house? <laughs> The insurance claims are only going to pay out. The insurance companies are only going to pay out so many times before they start saying, I think you're doing this on purpose. Breathe fire on them as well, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, right, so let's have one more. <laughs> I think you're doing this on purpose. <sighs> Good for you. <sighs> what kind of bad breath would you get, though? Like burning bad breath. Anyway, um, would you rather be a clumsy ninja or a wizard with amnesia? Oh, wizard with amnesia, I forget everything all the time anyway, so that's just giving me magic powers in the way that I exist currently. But you'd forget you had magic powers. It's always going to be fun then, figuring out I've got them, isn't it? No, not really. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that could go horribly, horribly wrong. Oh no, I've turned my kettle into a frog. How have I done that? I'm just insane. (laughs) I forgot I'm magic, I just think I've lost my mind. (laughs) It's like, why are all these frogs in the house? I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> very specific changing these into a frog I feel like that's a very witchy wizardy thing to do it's always frog. I shall turn you into a toad or a frog okay nice <laughs> okay well I think we've got to know you very well so that the next time you come on it'll make more sense <laughs> um, okay yeah um, so thanks for that Zoe you're very welcome that's almost the end of the show for now but on screen you can see our contact details it's at the cud tv on your social media and if you want to catch up with previous episodes you can always binge a lot on youtube look for chewing the cud thank you for watching and we'll see you sometime soon bye bye